life doesn't have to make any vows to itself. It just unfolds. And I don't feel that we need to strain ourselves. You can look some time and you can discern whether an energy is merely kind of rajasic or, or tamasic, or whether it is really the dictates of the vital force. Subtle thing. Rather than thinking about it, contemplation or meditation, it gets and exposes all these things with surgical clarity. Rather than thinking, thinking, which is based on old habits and patterns or something. Keeping quiet allows, you know, clarity of inner vision to prevail. So I remember some years ago it was like that also. That the changes were taking place so quickly and so deeply. For years I'd work on the on the streets making portraits of tourists and you know it was fun it was fun time something i was very comfortable with doing very skilled at doing but this change had come over me and i just couldn't do it there's some things you think you know comes a rainy day at least i've got this you know and there was something that felt very very independent because there was a feeling that i never have to work for anybody if you have a skill like this, you see, but it did come the time when it was not available. You can pack your easel, you can squeeze out your paint, you can sit down, you can put your sign up. Either nobody would come. I don't even know if you get that far. I could not go that far. Some people can go that far. I just go as far as going to pick the easel up and feeling. You know, like getting up, having a shower, putting your makeup on, putting your your rave gear on, and just going back to bed. Some things in life is like that, and you don't have to finish what you've started. You you can just cut it if it doesn't feel true. Sometimes the projection feels strong, and if you yeah okay, you know I'm going to do this and then this and then that, and even the first the first one you cannot tick off. Because the vital energy is not supplied for that, then either you can go with your mind and complain, and, "Oh my God, not again," and get into a big tantrum or drama about it, or you simply just accept that you know there's a truth in this, and be okay with this, so you don't make it into anything personal, because the vital force is not personal, and. Respecting it, acknowledging it, observing, and cooperating with the with these forces is a wisdom and brings in tremendous wisdom and joy. Because as you begin to feel affinity and cooperation and a joy of cooperating with it, everything is flowing so smoothly. Everything is flowing so smoothly. And you are seeing it, and your seeing of it is immense joy. It's almost as though someone has let you uh, into the projector room to watch the movie from the projector room, and you feel very, very, very privileged. The captain invites you into the cockpit, and you feel very, very privileged. You are a passenger like everyone else, but you have an a view and a position that is really a privilege when you begin to look and see from that place that insight in in seeing and recognize that the universe is not managed by human beings but by the supreme being of which you are growingly one with with it there is nothing it's incomparable joy. Incomparable. It's like being released from prison. Uh, one thing is that a good while ago I understood and felt why it was important to really just be quiet. Because the more you say things, 
the more there's a tendency to fix them. Mm-hmm. It's not the intention, but they just seem to get fixed. It's almost like you say, it is so. In other words, you're using relative mind, relative language to establish kind of absolutes. And it is not the it is not the work of thought to do that. So if you can somehow be confirmed about something and yet still keep your concepts open and a clear sense that you are the perceiving of whatever is happening. So there's always some space in your perceiving field. There's always some space. You're not moving in a claustrophobic environment inwardly. This is the best. Because the mind wants to firm up things and say, This is like this and this is like this and it can seem strong. But here inwardly flexibility is strength, not rigidity. Rigidity can feel unswaying, like reliable, but inflexibility is a great weakness. There's nothing in the world is so tight. And don't pour yourself into concepts. Be aware of them, make use of them, make use of thought, everything. But don't combine yourself with them. Always you preserve your inner spaciousness. Perhaps one of the most one of the great sufferings of our current time is a sort of lack of inner space. Because there's so much information, so much data, there's so much stimulus. That and really we think we are strong, but we are very weak, easily influenced. Quick to believe in the transient. So our mental sphere, psychological powers have developed and so on. And it's a very tight and claustrophobic world because it's a fearful place. People are not sure, they are confused, they have to pretend they know things which they cannot. So it's really a a time when we should be really uh, taught to contemplate, to meditate, to observe all these things that have been known for thousands of years, which we are not making use of them. That's one way of putting it, but at the same time it's playing like that. There will always be beings who are seeking to come out, to break out of this net, this fishnet of conditioning and dogmatic mentalities. There will always be beings who find their way out. They don't escape from life, but they escape from negative conditioning and the influence of that. They escape from, you know, rigid identity with the with the unreal. They escape from that, and they move in this world beautifully. In fact, they beautify the world. Perhaps you are one of them. Everyone who looks inwardly, not just outwardly and with real earnestness and sincerity and an urge for truth, contributes and supplies spiritual oxygen to this world. It is not good to think you do, so that pride doesn't develop. But just as nature is innocent, we return again to innocence. Never feel that the Self is far away. Actually, there is no distance. But for a mind, it is really immersed in conditioning, it's very difficult to accept that. So you have to say that the Self is nearer than, closer than intimacy, but you still have to include some distance. Otherwise, the conditioned mind just cannot assimilate a statement that you are that. If it does, it will turn it into an arrogance, into a pride. So it's okay to say the Self is closer than intimacy, then reflect on what that could be. How near is that? Papaji used to say, Self is behind the, the retina itself.